Well, hello there. This is Virtuals of Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. Today, I'm going to go through a game of the Vienna game, Max Lang Defense. Basically, I'm playing the Vienna, and Black, my opponent, is playing the Max Lang Defense. Now, the Max Lang is one of the most solid responses to the Vienna, and so as a Vienna player, you need to have a sense on how to respond to the Max Lang Defense. Now I'm going to go through some tactical ideas that I've learnt over time, uh, just through play, uh, that, but these seems, seem to be working for me. And a lot of these ideas aren't technically the most uh, accurate moves according to the engine, but the ideas tend to build up and create a coherent approach that often is quite successful. Let's go take a look. So I've got the white pieces, so e4, e5, knight, c3, so the Vienna, and knight f6, max lang defense. Now bishop out, and here the opponent plays like a two knights approach, and basically here black is inviting you to play the four knights Italian. And with the <coughs> max lang defense, very often you get closed positions, quite positional, very defensive. Historically, I didn't really like playing against it because it's a little bit hard to play. And you know, one of the things is I want to get out of Italians. So here, I don't play the Italian. I will play d3. Here we go, bishop. So super solid. Basically, it looks very much a four knights Italian. And so against this bishop, the first tactical idea that might be worth your while learning is to immediately create some tension. So bishop to e3. Now the idea is that bishop is potentially quite strong, and by putting our bishop in that position, it kind of nullifies what the bishop can do. So now they have to move their bishop a second time. Now if they capture, which is actually their best move, we get to uh, have an open f file. Doubled e pawns, but the open f file, which ends up usually pretty strong for us, because look at the opponent. Looks like they want a castle kingside. If they don't want to trade, well, they're forced to move their bishop a second time. And, you know, with that, we basically win some temper. So they decide to defend the bishop. So that is one of the best moves. And now comes another tactical idea. Knight forward. So firstly, knight to d5. With the knight in this position, it can't get kicked easily with the pawn. This knight now looks like it's potentially offering a trade. And if they trade, we capture back with the bishop, and the bishop still controls the f7 pawn, and we've removed one of their defenders on the king side. So as I said, it looks like they want to trade, uh, sorry, castle king side. And without that piece there, you know, these pieces are kind of trapped on the queen side. It allows us potentially to get a very rapid attack on their king side. Uh, if they don't take, well, there's a bit of tension there. This knight is in the center of the board, really good position, defense of that uh, bishop potentially, but also potentially attacking the c7 pawn, which is of course very good because of that absolute fork of the king and rook. And separate to the fork, it comes with check. It also restrains where the queen can potentially move because it covers uh, basically those two squares. So knight to d5 in this position, good tactical, uh, good tactical resource. Now they developed the bishop. You can see Stockfish says trading knights is actually the best. That's again a bit slow, very defensive. That's kind of their style. I now develop my knight. So here, with some development on this side, I'm happy to go to this potentially four knightish like uh, approach. But you can see Stockfish thinks a immediate. Uh, aggressive attack is good, and that is good because here, uh, you know, potentially we pin that knight. Take, take. Uh, you know, if they take, you know, if they, they obviously can't take back with the queen. If they take back with the uh, pawn, it damages their kingside pawn structure. However, I didn't feel like making that move at this time. So waiting move, that's fine. I decide to short castle. You can see Stockfish still thinks that that's the best approach at the moment, but we're pretty equal. I didn't really want to make that move at this time. They do another waiting move. I push a pawn. That basically stops these two pieces from coming to this side, which can be a little bit annoying. And now they crack a little bit. They advance their knight forward. You can see that's an inaccuracy. It's about plus one. Uh, they are sort of attacking the bishop here, 
But remember, I'm happy with an open F file. I now strike out to attack that bishop. What are they going to do? The bishop forced to move. So think about it. The move should have to move out once, move, uh, and now it's moved a second time. I now ask the question, what are they going to do with that knight? So they defend this way. Now, Stockfish thinks that this move isn't good, that uh, captures, captures, they get the open H file, but apparently it's fine. However, I think that's pretty hard to play for me, so I didn't actually want to open this, this H file with the rook and potentially the queen being able to make use of that. So I decided not to capture that knight. So in a sense, that was in fact a good move, even though Stockfish can work around that. I now move my bishop forward with an attack on the queen. I'm hoping that's going to force, yep, a pawn move, basically disallowing movement of the queen. The bishop back. Now, Stockfish thinks here, but remember, I want to potentially trade off the bishop. And here, it finally worked. So after three moves, the bishop having to move basically twice unnecessarily, they finally take, captures back, and now I've got an open F file. So that's potentially good for me. Let's see how it plays out later in the game. Now they start to push these pawns, opening up that diagonal again for the queen. This is an inaccuracy. You can see they need to actually rotate their knight over to make an attack. This doesn't really work. I ignore that move. And this is another tactical idea. Queen to e1. Very often when you're trying to move the queen into a potential attack, on the king side, queen to e1 makes a lot of sense. It sort of sidesteps this knight. It has access to these two squares uh, and potentially a very, very powerful attack onto the king side. So that's often a common idea. It also now has uh, access to this long dark square diagonal, potentially in the future, depending on what happens in the position. They push the pawn again. And again, see, you can see that's another inaccuracy. I can now take, undoubling those pawns, they take back, and here, undefended, so potentially I can capture that once I move my knight. And that knight can now move because that square is now defended. So knight to h4. You can see Stockfish thinks that's a better move, that's protected three ways, so that's quite a surprising sort of, uh, <laughs> quite a surprising um, move actually. It does end up getting pinned by my queen, but here my idea was that I was going to move the knight possibly to one of these two squares, moving forward into the attack, and that queen on e1 defends the knight. They now move the knight forward, and here obviously what they're thinking is a potential fork on this side, and the next tactical idea here is that it's often fine to sacrifice the rook on the queen side. That rook at the moment isn't doing anything. It's not defending anything really. It's not attacking anything. It's not part of the tactic. And so if they want to trade their knight for that rook, it's probably fine for me because that's one of their most active pieces. In a corner, it's terrible. Opposite side to the action. So I'm going to ignore this threat. So I move my knight forward, attacking their rook. So that rook has to move. There we go. Attacking my knight. And now I can take that pawn, double defense. And here they're defending each other. Basically, potentially, a, uh, it's a fully open file. Here, I control that file. King still stuck in the center. So potentially a very strong position for me. So here, I ignore that move, so I expected them to take. There we go. And you can see Stockfish actually straight up calls that an inaccuracy, even though there is a fork. Because while they're on this adventure on the queen side where the action isn't, I now have queen to c3. Basically winning tempo, aligning things up. They're going to have to move that knight. And so they take and see a blunder mate in three. So here, by sacrificing that piece, gaining tempo, moving my pieces in for the attack, I now have moved out of that very positional, uh, closed, uh, very closed positioned game into an absolutely winning attack. Now, admittedly, I don't actually see the winning line. The winning line here is queen captures pawn on g7. This is basically mate. 
And so the bishop has to move to give the king an escape square. So bishop here, but now we can take. They can take this way, but now check and it is mate. The king has lost. So that's the attack I should have seen, but I didn't see that. Instead, what I saw was something potentially equally nice. Basically, every move now here is almost a mate threat. So knight jumps forward and basically, yes, that's a move I should have made. That is potentially mate. So they have to uh, do something about, uh, about that knight. So there we go. And it also opens up the space. But now rook down to the end, attacking the king, you know, skewering it against the queen with check. King moves out of the way. Here I was trying to calculate. I didn't calculate. I was hoping that there would potentially be a, a, a mating net. Uh, so I decided to queen captures pawn again with check. King escapes. And now knight jumps out of the way from the attack of that rook. Again with check. Here I think the best move for black actually is to sacrifice their queen. But the king moves again. Queen out. Check yet again. Forward. Capture with the pawn. Check again. And now here on the open B file. Check again. Here they make a mistake. I take. Finally king here is in fact safe. They managed to escape. But hanging take. Take. Hanging take. And here looking at that. That's fine. Move the bishop. They take. Hanging take. And so here a move 32. We enter the end game, queen plus bishop versus the rook pair. I'm completely winning here. Now they're up a lot of time compared to me. So here I need to play a bit carefully, need to make sure I don't hang anything. So they take, that's fine. Queen here, looks like there's a potential fork. They miss that, fork, I capture one of their rooks. Here, I have to be careful, rook in that position, if I don't do anything, is mate because I'm trapped by that pawn. So here I give a check, they move, and I here I was considering, do I take that rook? I thought I could potentially just straight up take that rook and then I'll just win the end game. However, I decided, nah, let's not do that, but that was a mistake. Uh, I have to be very careful, have to be very careful. That's potentially a mate, so I give a check here. Now I defend the c1 square. Um, here I probably should move my bishop, but I thought, oh, let's just move the king out of the way. Move, just get rid of that risk of back rank mate. They take the bishop, that's fine. So he captures with check, and now there is a long potential fork. Difficult to see. These long forks with the queen, very deadly. And in fact, they do miss it. And so check with the fork, take the last rook. And he, my opponent, opted to resign. Because I had 15 second increment, I'm not going to lose the rest of the game. Good game. GG. The big takeaway from this game is to consider using some of these tactics in your games of the Vienna against the Max Lang defense. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.